All right, folks, so what we have here is the B-Tech DMR6X2, and uh, I wanted to do a video because when I use this radio on analog repeaters, one of the things I notice is a popping or a clicking sound that kind of drives me crazy, and I'm trying to work through a couple of fixes to see if I can get it working correctly and uh, avoid this. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to some examples of the popping and clicking, and then we're going to go into the software programming uh, system, software programming application, and see if we can go ahead and fix it. So let's go ahead and start the video. Absolutely right on that. Uh, when you're shooting for terrestrial, uh, you're not trying to bounce anything off the sky. Uh, vertical is going to really get it done for you. So what you hear there is some popping or clicking that appears to be taking place when the second timer is taking place on the clock. I'm not sure if that's what it is or not. I tried to work with some settings and I tried to adjust the squelch in case it was some external interference but none of that worked. So what we're going to do is we're going to disable the clock setting uh, from being displayed on the uh, home screen of the radio. We're going to need to hook this radio up to our computer with the programming cable. Now while this programming cable looks like other or radio programming cables, it's a little bit different. There's no circuitry or chips inside of this. It's just a pass-through cable. So you have to use this particular cable. Another cable will not work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up the side of my radio. Let me turn this thing off. I want to open up the side of my radio and expose the microphone and earphone ports. Then I want to take my cable and I want to make sure that it is firmly seated. Make sure that it's all the way in. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to hook this USB plug up to the USB interface on my laptop. It's that simple. Once we're connected to my laptop, I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio on, and then I'm going to check the COM port. After that, I'm going to select the initialization to make sure that everything communicates correctly. I can do all this from the menu bar. The next thing I'm going to do is pick the optional settings, and I'm going to go into display. And here there's an option to turn off the clock. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then click OK. The next thing I'm going to pick program from the menu option and I'm going to write the new configuration to my radio. Let's just go ahead and do that right now. Click OK and we're done. I appreciate you uh, taking uh, lead on this one, and uh, yeah, I was just uh, going to say that it was a pretty good day at work, <clears throat> and uh, it was kind of nice to get out a little bit earlier than I usually do. Okay, so from the video we just saw, it appears that that fixed the problem, but in additional use, I've seen or heard the clicking or popping continue. So I'm not entirely sure if it was the clock display that was doing that or if it was because I have dual channels uh, being monitored at the same time on the radio. So I went ahead and I disabled the sub-channel. We're going to continue to test, but this is something that does aggravate me. At first it didn't, but the more I listen to the radio, and I will be using this quite a bit on analog 2-meter repeaters, um, it did bother me, and uh, I really wish it would stop. So hopefully this can be fixed in firmware, but I think it's probably a hardware issue. I really like this radio, and I'm not sure this is going to deter me from continuing to use it. Um, but we'll see. Anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more content uh, of a similar nature, go ahead, click like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks everyone.